spring. Always a great season for motorsport. We'll start this trip around the TCR world by looking at the first races of the year of WTCR. Plus, we've TCR Europe, TCR Italy, TCR Germany and TCR Russia. We'll travel to America to follow the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge and with the first ever races of TCR South America. Welcome to episode 22 of Inside the World of TCR. pinnacle of the TCR pyramid, WTCR, kicked off its 2021 season in style on the legendary Nürburgring Nordschleife at the beginning of June. Ivan Muller started the first race from pole position in his Cyan Racing Lincoln Co. 03, ahead of reigning champion, teammate and nephew Jan Erlesche, and the two held station into the first corner, while Norbert Michalic was forced wide in his BRC Racing Team Hyundai Elantra N, which allowed his teammate Gabriele Tarquini up to third. The action heated up on lap two, with Tarquini slipstreaming past Erlache before lining up a move on Muller at the Döttingerhoer straight. But Tarquini's lead didn't last long. He was overtaken by Muller and at the beginning of the last lap went wide into turn one. With a bunch of drivers very, very close, Tiago Montero's Honda pulled off a brilliant move from fifth up to second in a single corner. Out onto the Nordschleife for the final lap, Muller was leading Montero with Urrutia third. The Portuguese driver pulled out of Muller's slipstream with the Döttingerhoe and sailed past the Lincoln Co into the lead, winning the race by half a second. Muller then had to settle for second ahead of Urrutia. Guerrieri was fourth, Mikulic fifth and Tarquini sixth. It was Montero's first victory on the Nordschleife in a WTCR race, so the Portuguese driver was super happy at the end of the race. Yeah, I tried to be smart on that one, you know. I, I was really banged up in the first uh, few laps, the first, first lap actually, but you know, I kept my focus and uh, I thought the, even though it's only three laps, it's a very long race for the tyres and for the car. So I kept my focus, tried to push as hard as possible. I saw the opportunity when Gabriele uh, tangled uh, at the first quarter. And after that, I just needed to try and follow Ivan as much as possible. I knew my only chance would be maybe on the straight line. So I need to really prepare that. And uh, well, you know, when you have a plan and everything works out, that's the way it is. So I'm very happy to start a season like this. Thank you, Honda. Thank you, Olinko. Thank you, Yas. Thank you to everybody. There was drama before the start of race two, as Esteban Gurrieri, third on the grid, failed to get away for the formation lap and was forced to start from the pit lane. Nesta Girolami started from pole but was quickly passed by Jean-Carl Bernay. Girolami then tried to cover off Luca Enschler but to no avail, with Enschler moving up into second and Girolami just managing to hold on to third ahead of Santiago Arrutia. There was trouble further back as the Hyundai of Norbert Mikulic was spun by the Cupra of Mikel Adkana at the exit of Turn 1, while the other Cupra of Rob Huff was also spun by the Hyundai of Andreas Beckman. This in turn saw Huff's car spin into Adkana before the Spaniard was hit again by Beckman. For all four drivers involved in the incident, this was the end of their race. Vernet took the chequered flag just four tenths of a second ahead of Engschler, while the two drivers were 12 seconds clear of Girolami. Tassi finished fourth, Urrutia fifth, and Berton sixth. Esteril then hosted the second WTCR event of the season. At the start of the first race, reigning champion Jan Erlesche, starting from P2, pipped pole sitter Gabriele Tarquini into turn one, but there was chaos behind them. Girolami missed his breaking point and hit Norbert Mikulic, who spun and collected Attila Tashi, while Mikel Adkana couldn't avoid colliding with the back of Vernet's car. Girolami stopped on the track while Vernet and Mikulic limped back to the pits and the safety car was deployed. When racing resumed on lap four, Erlache led from Tarquini, Muller, Urrutia and Montero. On lap nine, Tarquini slowed with a flat right front tyre and pitted, leaving Erlache leading comfortably from Muller, while Arutia held on to third place, keeping Montero at bay. And so it ended with a Lincoln Co. 1-2-3, with Erlache winning in front of Ivan Muller and Santiago Arutia. Tiago Montero and Esteban Gurrieri finished fourth and fifth. With Jean Calvenet and Nesta Girolami, who were first and second in the points involved in the incident at the start, Montero moved to the top of the standings. In the second race, pole sitter Guerrieri had a problem at the start and didn't get away when the lights went out, with Montero now in the lead, with Tashi up to second ahead of Vernet, who was forced to go around Guerrieri's slow starting Honda Civic and so wasn't at full speed on the way into turn one. 
The safety car was soon called after an incident involving the Zengo Motorsport Cooper of Mikel Atkenar and the Come To You Racing Audi RS3 LMS of Tom Coronel, with the Dutchman's car crashing out into the barriers. The race resumed on lap three with Montero in the lead ahead of Tashi and Vernet, while behind them was the Lincoln Co of Santiago Urrutia. The Uruguayan would soon lose two places to the Hyundai Elantra cars of Norbert Mikulic and Gabriele Tarquin, with Urrutia left to defend his position against Erlache during the closing stages of the race. There was drama for the leader on lap 10. The right-hand side bonnet catch on his Civic came loose, and Montero was quickly shown a mechanical black flag and ordered into the pit lane to repair it. That handed Tashi the lead. Meanwhile, their teammate Guerrieri was on a recovery drive. After dropping to 13th, he worked his way back up to finish 8th, forcing his way past Rob Huff and Ivan Muller on lap 11, with Huff also passed by Muller. During the final laps of the race, Tashi came under intense pressure from the pack of Elantra cars led by Vernet, but held on to take his first career win by just over a second. For Attila Tashi, it was his first WTCR victory at the end of a frenetic race. Vernet finished second while Mikulic completed the podium. Tarquini was fourth, Uruti a fifth and Erlache sixth. Huge satisfaction for Tashi in the Mini Park Fairway. It was a mega race. First of all, I'm, I'm really sorry for Esteban and more sorry for my teammate Thiago. First win in, uh, in uh, WTCR, very happy. Uh, this win should have been already two years ago again in Portugal. But uh, what comes, what takes away, it can, brings back in the future. So I'm very happy. Thank you. That second place put Vernet back into the lead of the championship standings, five points clear of Tashi, Muller, and Urrutia. <laughs> At the end of May, TCR Europe was in Le Castellet for the second event of the season. At the start of the first race, Teddy Clare made a great getaway from pole position, but alongside him, Mehdi Benani made a poor start from P2, being passed on the rundown to turn one by his teammate Felice Yelmini, Jimmy Clare and Mikel Adkenar, who'd started from eighth on the grid. There was more bad news for the Sebastian Loeb racing team as Sammy Tufik's race ended on the opening lap after the young Moroccan driver ran wide at turn two after being touched from behind by Jimmy Claret. The beginning of the race was animated by a fierce duel for fourth between Adkanar and Benani, but it was Niels Langeveld behind the two who eventually took advantage of the situation when Benani bounced a bit too much on the curb of turn two, going slightly wide and allowing the Dutchman to pass on the inside. On the same lap at the chicane, Langeveld also passed Adkanar for fourth with this move. Championship leader Adkanar then lost another place when he was passed by the Honda Civic of Jack Young on the inside of turn 11. The top positions didn't change, and so Teddy Clare took a lights to flag victory at his home event, with his brother Jimmy finishing third, the two being split by Yelmini in second. Langeveld finished fourth, Young fifth, and Adkanar sixth. In the second race, the start again proved to be critical. Pole sitter Viktor Davidovsky and his PSS racing teammate Franco Girolami, who'd started from P2, were both beaten to turn one by Adkanar. Jimmy Clare, however, dived past the trio going into turn two to move into the lead, and from then on, the Peugeot driver never looked back. On lap four, Benani, Girolami, Yelmini and Taufik battling for sixth ran in a train down the Mistral Strait, with Taufik picking the perfect line to pass three cars in a single manoeuvre around the outside going into the scene corner. On lap five, contact between Langevelt and Young while scrapping for P3 saw both cars forced to retire, with Young pulling off the track and Langevelt limping back to the pits. And so, following Teddy Claret's maiden TCR Europe victory in race one, his brother Jimmy repeated the feat in race two to give Team Claret Sport a perfect weekend at their home round of the series. Adkanar finished second, retaining the lead in the championship, while Taufik completed the podium. For rounds five and six, TCR Europe went to Zandvoort. In the first race, pole sitter Jack Young made a good start, but it was the Audi of Nicolas Barth that made the best getaway, gaining two positions to sit in second place behind Young going through turn one. On lap two, Niels Langeveld overtook his teammate and reigning TCR Europe champion Mehdi Benani with this move into turn three that ended with a slight contact. There was drama on lap three when Tom Coronel in third went to pass Bart for P2 through turns nine and ten. The pair made contact and Coronel then dropped behind Borkovic when he mistakenly pressed the speed limiter button while trying to radio the team. 
On lap four, Coronel passed Borkovic for second place and began his pursuit of the race leader. Within a few laps, Coronel had closed the gap and was clearly pressuring the British driver into making a mistake. The inevitable happened at turn nine on lap eight, and Coronel seized his chance to dive up the inside of the Honda to take the lead. On home soil, Tom Coronel grabbed his first win of the season. Young was second and Borkovic completed the podium. Langevelt finished fourth, Girolami fifth and Bart sixth. In the second race, the two front row drivers, Polsitter Taufik and Langevelt, were still side by side after three corners going into the banked turn four. Here, the Dutchman got the maximum out of the banking, staying on the outside and managing to pass his teammate when exiting from the following right turn over the crest, with Girolami following in third. On lap two, race one winner Tom Coronel suddenly slowed coming out of turn three and was hit by the Audi RS3 LMS of Klim Gavrilov, who in turn was hit by the Hyundai Elantra of Felice Yelmini. The safety car would be called into action while the car was recovered, but not before Franco Girolami had passed Niels Langeveld for the lead with this move from the Argentinian, which required the slightest bit of touching. So the win went to Franco Girolami, the sixth different winner from the first six TCR Europe races in 2021. Langeveld was second, Isidro Callejas third, Borkovic fourth, Jimmy Clare fifth and Benani sixth. The win meant a delighted Franco Girolami took the lead in the driver standings and was congratulated by his brother, WTCR driver Nestor at the Mini Park Ferme. Adkanar, who missed the event because he was competing in the first ever ETCR race in Vallelunga, is still second with just an 11 point gap. TCR Germany moved to Austria for the second event of the season at the Red Bull Ring. At the start of the first race, the Italian Eric Scalvini sprinted from pole to lead, ahead of series leader Luca Engschler and Dominic and Marcel Fugel. Behind them, Martin Anderson and Sandro Subek made contact while fighting for fifth. While Scalvini dominated the race, on the penultimate lap, Anderson managed to secure fifth spot after this move on Robin Yar almost allowed René Kircher through. For Scalvini, it was his first ever win in TCR Germany. Engschler, who dominated the season opening event in Oschersleben, finished second. Brothers Dominic and Marcel Fugel were third and fourth, respectively. Starting from pole again in the second race, Scalvini led into the first corner from Dominic Fugel, Enschler, Philipp Regensberger and Marcel Fugel. As the field negotiated turn one, René Kircher made contact with Sandro Subek and dropped back. In the replay from his onboard camera, you can appreciate how he managed this little display of drifting. Patrick Singh in a Hyundai i30N entertained the spectators with a very aggressive race after starting from 10th on the grid. This was when he moved up to 4th on lap 13 after passing Nico Gruber. Scalvini claimed a second win. Dominic Fugel was second and Engschler completed the podium. Singh was 4th, Gruber 5th and Anderson 6th. For the Italian driver and his Wimmerwerk Motorsport Cupra Leon Competition, it was a real triumphal weekend. Two pole positions and two race wins meant he pocketed the full 70 points on offer. I'm really happy to fight uh, with uh, Luca, Dominic, the, all the other guys. Amazing level here in Germany. I like so much this championship. Fantastic, fantastic, yeah. After struggling in the opening event, Scalvini moved up into second in the standings, 19 points behind Luca Engschler and five ahead of Dominic Fugel. Watkins Glen hosted round four of the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge at the end of June. Ryan Eversley took the win driving his Honda Civic Type R. He took the lead at the beginning of the last hour and emerged victorious from the close battle that followed against Norman's Hyundai Elantra N, Michael Lewis's Hyundai Velosta N and the sister Atlanta Speedwork Honda of Ryan Noka. Eventually, the Brian Herter Autosport Hyundai cars of Norman, Parker Chase and Lewis Taylor Hagler completed the podium. The latter pair recovered from an early off-track excursion into a gravel trap, beating the Civic of Noka and Bob Henderson by less than three tenths. At the end of the first hour of racing, there was an incident between the two Copeland Motorsport Hyundai Veloster N cars of Tyler Gonzalez and AJ Moose. Gonzalez ran wide and to avoid a wrecked GT car swerved to the right toward his teammate's car. Mus's Veloster was squeezed between Gonzalez's and a GT car and couldn't avoid making contact, sending Gonzalez spinning and crashing into the barriers. 
Eversley won by 6.4 seconds over Ryan Norman, scoring Atlanta Speedworks first victory in the series. The IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge then raced at Watkins Glen for a second time in six days, and the Atlanta Speedworks team scored another victory on the New York State circuit. During the final moments, Noka navigated traffic to win a back-and-forth duel for the victory. With two minutes left, Morley drove his Audi past Noka's Honda, but seconds later, Noka retook the lead. It was the first victory for Noka and Henderson, and it looked like a 1-2 finish for Atlanta Speedworks until the number 94 Honda was penalised because of a minimum weight infringement. Eversley's penalty meant that he lost the lead in the standings, slipping 130 points behind Hagler and Lewis. TCR Italy was in Misano at the beginning of June for the second event of the season. At the start of the first race, Franco Girolami, starting from pole, took the lead. Antiburi was able to squeeze into second place ahead of Nicola Baldan, who was followed by Jack Young and Salvatore Tavano. The safety car was deployed on lap two after Raffaele Gurrieri's Cupra had gone off. When racing resumed on lap four, Jack Young passed Antiburi and moved into second. Soon afterwards, Damiano Reduzzi and Igor Stefanovski collided while fighting for P8 and both retired. In the meantime, Dusan Kuril advanced to fifth, passing Chekon and Tavana with this door-to-door -door move. On lap 10, Matteo Poloni touched Federico Paolino from behind, but they were both able to continue the race. Despite a safety car intervention to remove a car stuck in the gravel, Girolami managed to keep the lead and the top positions didn't change. The Argentinian then took the chequered flag ahead of the target competition duo of Antiburi and Nicola Baldan. After the race, a five-second penalty dropped Kuril from fourth to eighth. So, Chekon finished fourth, Brilliadori fifth and Volt sixth. Pole sitter Dusan Kuril couldn't make the grid of race two due to a technical issue. And so, Damiano Reduzzi took the lead at the start from P2. Behind him, Buri moved to the inside of Tavano and passed him for third into turn one. The safety car was deployed on lap two to recover Ettore Carminati's Hyundai that had crashed. The race resumed one lap later with Anti Buri moving into the lead ahead of Damiano Reduzzi after this overtake. Behind them there was a furious battle for P3 with door-to-door -door contacts between Young, Baldan, Chacon, Tavano, Girolami and Brilliadori. On lap 14, Paolino's Cupra hit Poloni's Audi while they were fighting for 10th. Poloni spun and was collected by Giacon's Honda and retired, while Paolino was given a 25-second penalty. Buri's lead, however, wasn't in danger, as Young and Baldan were fighting behind him. Baldan took the inside into the last turn and pipped Young on the line by three-tenths to finish second. Behind them, Tavano crossed the line in fourth position, but was given a 25-second penalty for unfair driving behaviour, and so dropped to 15th, while Chekon and Brilliadori advanced to fourth and fifth, respectively. The third event of TCR Italy took place in Vallelunga at the end of June. In race one, Brilliadori made a good start and led the field into turn one, but it was Tavano who made the best start and passed Baldan for second place on the getaway from the grid. Baldan then slipped to fourth behind Buri. Kevin Chekon also made up a place, passing Michele Imberti for fifth. Going into turn two, there was contact between the two Cupra cars of Federico Paolino and Raffaele Gurrieri. Both cars ended up stranded in the gravel, and so the safety car was deployed while they were recovered. After a little under 10 minutes behind the safety car, racing resumed on lap 5. Tavano had closed up behind Brilliadori, but much of the race was then fairly processional, with Brilliadori pulling away from Tavano to open up a sizeable lead. On lap 13, the Honda Civic of Matthias Vatel pulled up at turn 4 with a technical issue while running in 7th. On lap 15, Marco Butti ended up in the gravel, but the car's position wasn't deemed to be a risk to the other competitors, and so racing could continue. The final lap then witnessed two last-minute dramas. Brilliadori crossed the line to take an assertive win from Tavano and Buri, but it was Chekon who finished fourth after a flat tyre forced Baldan to slow and drop to fifth. A similar issue affected Imberti, who finished 13th after starting the final lap in sixth place. At the start of the second race, Matthias Vatel made good use of pole position and led the field, followed by his ALM motorsport teammate Ruben Volt, who kept at bay Kevin Chekon, Michele Imberti, Antti Buri, Salvatore Tavano, Eric Brilliadori and Nicola Baldan. During the first lap, Igor Stefanovski went wide at the Cimini bend and rejoined in 12th position. Behind the leaders, Buri was chasing Imberti for P4, with Tavano holding on to 6th place ahead of Brilliadori, Baldan and Leonov. Finally on lap 7, Buri managed to pass Imberti for fourth at Cimini. On the same lap, Ruben Volt missed the breaking point into the Campagnano bend, and Kevin Chekon immediately passed him to move up to second. 
One lap later, Volt lost another position when he was passed by Antti Buri. The Estonian would pit a couple of laps later with a flat front tyre. Leonov also suffered a puncture while he was in eighth position, chasing Brilliadori and had to pit. On lap 14, it was Vartel who pitted with a flat front tyre, handing the lead to check on. A similar problem then hit Stefanovski, who went off into the gravel from P7, prompting the safety car into action. The green flag was then waved for a couple of thrilling final laps. Chekon rejected the assault from Buri with some very, very late braking, while Tavano in third was really close. On lap 17, Brilliadori dived to the inside of Imberti at the hairpin and moved into P4. Baldan benefited from the situation and passed Imberti at the exit of the Roma bend for fifth. During the final lap, Baldan pushed Brilliadori wide at the hairpin and took fourth behind Chekon, Buri and Tavano. However, the move was considered unfair, and after the race, he was demoted to fifth behind Brilliadori. For Kevin Chekon and his aggressive Team Italia Hyundai i30N, it was an outstanding victory. Buri was second, and Tavano completed the podium. Brilliadori finished fourth, Baldan fifth, and Imberti sixth. The results mean that Brilliadori's leading margin in the standings was cut to just seven points ahead of Buri, while Chekon climbed to third, a further six points behind. Tavano and Baldan are also in contention for the title as they are fourth and fifth with gaps of 21 and 31 points respectively. TCR Russia travel to the N ring in Nizhny Novgorod for the second event of the season. Pavel Kalmanovich driving an AG Team Cupra started from pole position for the rolling start, with Grigory Burlutsky alongside, and both got away well, while Egor Ruchev in an Audi had, from fifth on the grid, dived down the inside at the first corner, snatching third from Zakhar Slutsky. Mikhail Mityeyev would go on to have a problematic race. After pitting because of technical issues, he rejoined several laps down before retiring with a broken front left upright. Kalmanovic won the race just over a second ahead of Burlutsky. Orudchev was third in front of Slutsky and former champion Dmitry Bragin. Series leader Kirill Ladijin was sixth. At the start of the second race, Dmitry Bragin made good use of pole position to lead the field, while Egor Fokin, second on the grid, was quickly swallowed up by the drivers behind. Ladijin moved up into second, followed by Nuriyev. Behind those three, a furious battle for P4 began, involving Maslenikov, Ivan Lukashevich, Egor Arutchev, Zakhar Slutsky, Timur Shigabutinov and Grigory Burlutsky. They ran bumper to bumper for several laps, and eventually they were joined by Mikhail Mityeyev, Fokin and Lev Tolkachev. On lap 19, Mityeyev passed Shigabudinov for P8. Their cars clashed, and Shigabudinov dropped to 12th. Bragin kept the lead till the end, grabbing his first win of the season. Ladijin was second in front of Nuriyev. Maslenikov was fourth, Slutsky fifth, and Lukashevich sixth. With that second place, Ladijin stretched his lead in the standings to 23 points, ahead of race one winner Pavel Kalmanovich and Andrei Maslenikov. The championship will resume at the Igora Drive on the 24th and 25th of July. TCR South America kicked off its inaugural season at the end of June at Interlagos. Ahead lay eight events in the calendar, including an endurance race in four different countries, Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay and Chile. In race one, Pepe Oriola made a better start than pole sitter Rafael Reis, beating his teammate to turn one. And from then on, Oriola was never threatened, crossing the line nearly three seconds clear. The battle for second place between Jose Manuel Sapag and Reis was tight at the beginning of the race. On lap two, there was this contact between the pair, although they both maintained their respective positions. On lap nine, Rodrigo Baptista dived up the inside of Sapag into turn one. Sapag went wide, and the Brazilian driver moved up into third. One lap later, at the same location and in a similar maneuver, Sapag slightly missed his braking point and went wide, opening the way for the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce, driven by Paul Holton, who took fourth place. And so it was Pepe Oriola who was the winner of the first ever race of TCR South America. His teammate Reyes finished second and Rodrigo Baptista completed the podium. Holton was fourth, Sapag fifth and Chodney sixth. 
in the second race, pole sitter Gessiel Andrade didn't make it to the grid. The start was then fairly chaotic, with Guillermo Reichel's Audi having stalled on the grid and Oriola making another superb start to jump from eighth to second behind Adalberto Baptista going into turn one. Oriola took the lead of the race a couple of corners later after passing Baptista. The Spaniard would keep the position until the end of the race. On the second lap, there was this contact between Fabio Casagrande's Alfa Romeo and Sapag's Honda into turn two. Luckily, they were both able to continue the race. On lap six, there was then this heavy contact between the Honda of Reis and Rodrigo Baptista's Audi. They were both forced to retire. Reis would later be disqualified for causing the incident, which also brought out the safety car for a couple of laps. For Pepe Oriola, it was win number two. Holton finished second and Chorne third. Adalberto Baptista was fourth, Sapag fifth, and Reichelt sixth. For Oriola, it was almost a perfect score, taking 54 points from the 55 potentially available. The Spaniard already has a solid gap of 20 points over Holton in second. The next race meeting of TCR South America will be a 160km endurance race at Curitiba at the end of July. That then was Inside the World of TCR episode 22. We'll be back at the end of August with, as you've come to expect, plenty of action from around the TCR world. But for now, it's goodbye.